What's up my reseller friends? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sabrina. I thrift to resell on eBay and Macari. I am a full-time reseller and I focus on selling clothes, media, toys, and collectibles. In this video, I'm going to go ahead and just show you some of my what sold um, from the last week or two. I'm just going to um, pick out a few to show you and yeah, let's just jump right into it. So the first item I have for you is this vintage Disney Store 100 and Dalmatians jumpsuit. So when I'm out there sourcing, I always look at kid clothes, baby clothes. One of the main reasons is because I always try to look at things that other resellers aren't looking at. Um, so like if I go into thrift stores, all the resellers are always in the electronic area. They're in the media, so they're looking at video games and DVDs, or they're in the men's t-shirts. It seems like those are the main places where I see them. Um, so I normally like to look at things that they're not looking at because I feel like there's money to be made anywhere in pretty much any category. And I don't really see very many resellers looking at kids' clothes. So that's something that I've kind of jumped into and I've been selling a lot more of lately and it sells. I mean, it's not, most kid clothes don't sell for a lot of money, but there's certain ones that do. And you got to look for the stuff that's either vintage or really unique. And in this case, I picked this up because it's vintage and it's a vintage Disney store. I mean, Disney store, anything Disney store sells really well for me. Uh, but if it's a vintage Disney store, um, that's even better. So I got this for a dollar, sold it for 15 bucks plus the cost of shipping. Next is this We Sing. Um, DVD. Now, if you ever see these We Sing, um, now I have come across them a few times. Um, they're not super easy to find, but you can find them. And these sell really good because these were really popular in the 90s. My brothers actually used to watch these. Um, I was slightly a little bit older um, by the time these came out, um, but I still remember them because they were always playing in our house. Um, so it was like these, um, like a collection of children movies where these kids are like singing with like characters that are dressed up in costumes and stuff like that. Um, there's probably maybe about 10 of these DVDs, different, different ones. Um, but this one sold for $13. I paid a dollar for it. And um, I, I just really want to talk about kid clothes today because I'm, it, they're just selling. And I kind of thought a little bit strategically as far as kid clothes go because I know that right now, um, just with everything going on in our world with the economy and gas prices and, you know, I just feel like buying clothes for kids is one of those things that it seems like more parents are leaning on buying um, pre-owned because kids just outgrow clothes like so fast, right? Or they dirty them or damage them very quickly. Um, so actually, you know, going secondhand with kid clothes is the way to go in my opinion, even with my daughter, she's 11 and she's constantly changing her style. Like she's already to the point now where it's like she's, uh, her clothes aren't being outgrown as fast, but her style is like outgrowing super fast. Um, so she's always wanting to, you know, change her style or the types of clothes that she wears to school and stuff. And I told her, I can't afford to just every like three months we go out and buy a new wardrobe. But if you are cool with like secondhand clothing, I can buy you more clothes. Um, so that's kind of where I stand with my daughter right now. She actually asked me to take her to a thrift store yesterday. So we went and she was like super excited. She had her own cart and everything and she found some clothes and she was really excited about it. So I feel like this is something that her and I can, um, can love and do together is thrifting. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, and also I just, I'm just like, yeah, I can't afford to just keep buying you new clothes. Um, so, but anyways, getting back to what I was saying, I just think it's, 
you know, smart to start looking at what are the types of things that people in general, maybe not just kids clothes, but just in general, what are the types of things that people are like not wanting to go to the store to buy that maybe they want just a better deal on something and they rather just get it online and they're okay with buying something used um, to save money. What are those types of things? Um, and for me, I was just really thinking of kids clothes. Um, but just be really careful because <laughs> I don't want to like encourage you to just go out there and buy a whole bunch of like these kids clothes because it's not all of it sells and it doesn't sell for a lot of money. So you have to make sure you're pricing it right. Um, so what I had done was I was at a yard sale about three weeks ago and they were about to close up. And then I ended up buying all the kid clothes from the girl that she had. I think I paid 40 bucks and I took everything. It was like I filled up my whole back seat of my car, which is all like little girl clothes that range from three months to about um, 60. So I've been kind of slowly getting some of those listed. Like I'm not in a hurry to list those ones, but um, every like every now and then I'll like list some of them. So that's what I've been doing. And I haven't quite made that $40 back yet, but I'm almost there. And I have like a lot of the clothes, but these were two of the pieces. I just lotted them up together, $12, free shipping. I mean, I didn't make a lot of money, but these like little like transactions, they all add up. And what I really like about listing kid clothes too, is they're just so much easier to list. You, like I took these in my light box. And another thing that, I mean, this is huge for me, is I have never once had a piece of child's clothing returned, ever. So the likelihood of it getting returned is low, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, those are just some of the things that I like about selling kids clothes. They're really lightweight to ship. A lot of them um, are under four ounces. So. Yeah. Next is this lot of Van Halen. Van Halen. <laughs> I can't talk. CDs. Um, I had it listed for $25 free shipping. Um, I think I sent someone an offer. I can't remember if I sent an offer or someone sent me the offer, but it was for 20 bucks, And that's what I sold it for. So at this one yard sale, I saw uh, this lady had a box and it had a bunch of like classic rock music in it, like Van Halen and Guns N' Roses and, you know, a lot of those type Motley Crue um, bands. And those ones tend to do really well. Um, now, the types of CDs that I try to stay away from are the bands and groups and artists that were popular from like the mid 90s to like the mid 2000s because that time era really was when CDs were really really popular and they were just at their prime and tons of CDs were being sold and bought and you know there's just so many of them out there so like a Christina Aguilera type thing or a No Doubt or you know Alanis Morissette or something like that like those ones that were that sold like millions and millions of copies. Think about where all those millions and millions of copies are. Crap ton of them are on eBay. So I normally tend to stay away from those really popular ones from the 90s and 2000s. Anyways, this lady at the yard sale had a box full of these and I asked her if she'd take them off, if I could have them all for five bucks and she said yes. So I listed like all these CDs and like they've been selling like consistently, like almost every single day I've been selling a CD from that lot. Um, so yeah, that was one of them. And then also, you know, this is just an example of when you buy media in bulk and you look through them and you pick out the ones that are worth money and then whatever is left over, it's like, what do you do with them? I would like to bundle them. Um, this is none of these CDs were really worth much. Like I think they all valued like between like four to seven dollars a piece. And instead of like trying to make like a dollar 
off of each one profit. Instead, I just decided just to bundle them up and sell them for a really good price. 12 bucks. I mean, 12 bucks for six DVDs is not bad at all. Um, and then even this person got an even better deal because it was on sale for 11.38. So, uh, but yeah, you can ship a media mail. It doesn't cost a lot to ship. It's under $4. Um, yeah. Next are these super cute uh, little people of the Beatles. Uh, I, I really don't have any reason for showing them besides the fact that I just thought they were really cute and I wanted to show them. But um, the funny thing about it is I did buy like a, a huge Ziploc bag full of little people at a yard sale. And these were in them, but when I first started going through that bag, I totally thought it was Harry Potter. <laughs> I was like, oh, they have like a Harry Potter little people. But then I like looked a little closely and saw that they were the Beatles. I just thought that they were cute. Next is this Guns N' Roses women's um, t-shirt blouse. I pick up band tees for days. Like, I find them everywhere I go. And I can normally get them for super cheap. This one in particular cost 50 cents. And I sold it for $15 um, plus the cost of shipping. I think I had it listed for like 18 and someone sent me an offer for 15. And yeah, that sold. I think I only had it listed for like a couple of days. Um, but I always love to sell band t-shirts. They will always sell. And the thing about them is like, some of them could be worth a lot of money, but then some of them could just be decent money. So like, you, you don't know, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think they're always worth picking up if you can get them for cheap. Next is this Playboy Bunny shirt. So I found this at a thrift store. I think I paid $3 for it. Um, this one obviously was from like the Y2K and it had that same like fit and everything. But um, yeah, I accepted an offer on this one. I wasn't sure what to list it at because I couldn't find comps on it. So I listed it at $50 plus shipping or best offer. And then later that day, someone sent me an offer for 30 and I was just like, eh, that's fine with me. And I took it. Oh, but going back to that, I always, if I find like anything that has a Playboy bunny on it, I always buy it because it always sells for good money. And next is the Shrek book. Can you believe I sold it for $60 plus the cost of shipping? This is actually the second time I sold it. The first time the buyer never paid. Um, but yeah, so yeah, 60 bucks guys. I, it's a really, really pretty book too. It's like about like the art of it, I think. Um, but it's huge. It's like this really big book. Um, but I have noticed that Shrek stuff sounds good. Like you'll see me talk about Shrek sometimes in some of my other videos because, um, I, I always sell, I always sell it. Anytime I list anything Shrek, it sells. Um, I, I like to say that Shrek is like the toy story for DreamWorks, you know, like that one movie that like really put them on the map. I actually tried to put it on the other night. Um, my daughter wasn't feeling good, so I was trying to find like a family movie to put on TV, and um, I put on Shrek. And we actually sat through and watched the whole movie. But like at the end of the movie, my husband and my daughter, because my husband hadn't hadn't seen it before either, they were both like that movie sucked, and I'm like, yeah, I feel like it didn't like stand the test of time for me. I don't want to offend any Sh Shrek fans out there, <laughs> but like we were just kind of like. Wasn't really that good <laughs> like I remember it being better like when I was younger but I remember like a laughing laughing at that movie and it just wasn't funny this time around the only part that really was really funny was um do you know the muffin man <laughs> like I that part was still funny but anyway it's totally getting off subject here but yeah, this sold for $60, and my thing is I really like selling books. Like, I like looking through books. Um, I like listing them. They're easy to list or easy to ship. Um, but my problem is that, like, I really have a hard time, like, figuring out what types of books to pick up. 
So that's a little bit of a struggle. Like I like selling them and I'm interested in it, but I have so much to learn when it comes to selling books. Um, but sometimes like if I just see something that just sticks out to me and I, I'll get it. Uh, but the problem is like over 50% of the time I'm wrong. <laughs> so I just can't trust myself. But I really felt like I wanted to get this one because like I said, I've always just had luck selling, selling Shrek. Um, so my advice for you, I don't have any advice to tell you like what types of books to pick up. I am going to talk about books a little bit more in this video. But uh, what I would say is it's always good. Like if you're able to check comps before buying them, do that. <clears throat> because sometimes you'll see a book and you'll be like, whoa, I'm sure this has got to be worth something. And then it's not. Um, or vice versa. It's just, it's hard. Learning how to resell books is really hard. It's something that I struggle with. Um, but, um, but yeah, just use your best judgment. Check the comps. So this sweater was my daughter's. We had recently gone through and organized her room and cleaned it up. And I told her to go through her closet and pull out, you know, anything that doesn't fit her anymore. And um, unfortunately, this really cute Beauty and the Beast sweater did not fit her anymore. She is 11 and this is a size 7 8. Yeah, I'm pretty sure my mom bought this for her and it's always just so great. I talk about these in so many of my videos about how excited I get selling my daughter's clothes that she outgrows. Um, yeah, so this sold for $10 plus the cost of shipping. Again, this is a Disney store. Let's see what the tag looks like so you can look out for it. Where is it? Where is the tag? There we go. So yeah, just keep an eye out for that because um, Disney store stuff sells good. These three pairs of Barbie shoes sold for $20. So anytime I find Barbie shoes or I have Barbie shoes that aren't the regular, like just like common looking shoes, you know what I'm talking about? Just like the, you know, generic ones with the heels. Like if anything looks like unique, like these are probably from, um, like the Y2K era, I believe um, these were either came on the actual dolls themselves and they also had like these like Fashion Avenue um, clothing sets that actually are worth pretty good money if you find them. But um, these are the types of shoes that came like in those sets too. So there was no way I was gonna find out what set these ones were from that was way too hard I always advise if like advise if you're gonna sell Barbie clothes or replacement parts for Barbies that you know which Barbie it came from you'll make more money that way it'll sell faster um, but sometimes it's just not possible or even worth your time to figure it out so I just threw these on there for 20 bucks just making my best judgment and they sold so yeah I yeah all right, another women's um, band tee. This one is an Aerosmith one. This one sold for $10 plus the cost of shipping. Now, the ones that aren't really worth a lot of money, I normally list my band t-shirts at $15 plus shipping or best offer. That's kind of like the, the sweet spot for me when it comes to pricing on those types of things so I wanted again just wanted to show you more of the CDs that so I accepted an offer for this one seven bucks um, when you're shipping CDs though make sure that you don't just throw them into like a regular poly mailer um, the, the jewel cases on the CDs can break so easily uh, so my advice to you is if you do want to get into selling CDs to make sure that you have the right materials you need to ship them. What I do, if it is one CD or two CD, I will take off like the, like a part of a box, um, like a bigger size box I'm not gonna use. Cause whenever I have big boxes um, from just stuff that I've ordered at home for myself, um, I don't throw them away, but I also don't save them because I don't sell big items. But what I do is I cut them up into like pieces and this is a perfect example of one of the things i use those pieces for so i'll just put like the cd inside the cardboard and then roll it into the cardboard put tape around it and then put it inside a mailer because the guarantee 
the types of people that are buying these CDs, half of them are probably buying it really because they have a CD player and they want to listen to the CD inside the CD player. But then the other half of the type of people that are buying these is because they want them for collector purposes. Like there's a Guns N' Roses fan, Guns N' Roses fan out there who got rid of his Guns N' Roses CDs a long time ago, but now is kind of like, oh, you know, I want, I want my collection back. You know, I just want to be able to like collect it. So then they're back online and buying them. I'm pretty sure my husband did that with all the Nirvana CDs, <laughs> but um, yeah, a lot of people are buying them for collector reasons. And it's not, it's not a good thing when a buyer opens that package and sees like a crack or something that on what they bought that they weren't expecting. Um, so yeah, I mean, even though they only paid $7 on this item free shipping, that's not the buyer's problem. That's my problem. And I have to make sure that even though I'm not making a lot of money that I still am taking care of this item when I ship it out. So I just really want to, you know, just encourage you um, to make sure that you're doing that, you know, make sure that when you sell things that can break, even if it's just like, do you know how easy it is to replace a CD case? It's so freaking easy, but it's still like the principle of the matter. Like you want the buyer to have a good buying experience. Um, so just make sure you're shipping these right. And then another thing too, with me, I buy, um, or I use my eBay store credits to get the boxes that are the six by four by four. And those are great for shipping CDs. You can fit maybe like probably up to three in there. Um, so I'll put the CDs in there. Like if there, if there's more than two, or if the CD has a value of $15 or more, I'll ship it in a box. Um, but I will never just throw a CD inside just a regular mailer without giving that it that extra protection. Actually, I take that back. I would do it because I did do it and I had a problem. So that's why I learned from that mistake. Um, so just make sure you're doing what you need to do. Here's some more. I've just put them here just to show you. Um, these, this set of two Pink Floyd CDs sold for $10 free shipping. And again, this one, I wrapped it up in that cardboard. Would you guys like me to make a video to show you how I do that? If you would, leave a comment and I'll, I'll make the video, but only if it's something that you guys can benefit from. Um, if no one cares, then I won't make it. All right. Now this belonged to a brat doll. It's a boy doll. Um, I got this in a set that came with a, like a whole bunch of like random Barbie stuff. And this, this was one of the cases where it was really important that I knew which doll this went to because I really believe that's the only way I was going to be able to get $30 for it. Um, so what I did to try to find it was for one, I knew it was a brat because the brat clothing, um, it's totally Y2K style clothes. So that that's, that's already a hint for you to know if it's brat, if it looks Y2K and then to like they're the outfits, are a little bit like shorter than um, your average Barbie. Um, so like these pants are just shorter, like it wouldn't fit a Barbie. Um, so that's another way that you know too. And then their shoes are always like snap on, like their feet don't like slide in, like it snaps in. Um, so you can kind of see if I can find a picture to show you. Yeah, see right there, they just like snap in. Um, so that's how you know that it's brats. And then once you know that it's brats, like how I figured this out, all I did was I put boy brats camouflage. And I was able to find it, find out what doll it went to. Um, I want to show you this one because this brand always sells for me. I used to find it in Colorado all the time um, but this is my first time finding it in california it is called the mountain i want to say hold on where oh there it is that's what it looks like the mountain um these shirts they always sell this one even had a little hole in it 
but this one went for $12 plus the cost of shipping. Paid either dollar fifty cents for it at a yard sale. This also came from that lot of little girl clothes that I bought that I told you about earlier. This is also a Disney store. Again, I'm just showing you these things because I just want you to see um, a pattern and like certain things that sell. So um, yeah, Disney store. See, that's what it looks like. Um, you'll find these everywhere. They're everywhere, guys. It doesn't matter where you live. You will find little kids Disney store. Well, this is more of a recent one. It doesn't say Disney store anymore. Um, because I think they were already, they had an idea that, that they probably weren't going to be the Disney store anymore. And they were kind of trying to transition into everything like being like shop Disney. So, um, so yeah. But these, these, the like Disney ones that come from either shop Disney or Disney parks or Disney store. Um, those are the ones that you want to keep an eye out for. But like I said, you can find these anywhere and you can get them for dirt cheap. Like people are like sometimes just wanting to give this stuff away. Okay. So this is going back to, I said, I was going to talk a little bit more about books. Um, so another thing that I really look for with books is if I see series, um, if I see complete series of something. So like I was at a yard sale and the guy had like a whole bunch of books. I asked him how much his books were. I think he said a dollar a piece. And um, I found that they had like the whole set of this, of this particular book, or it was like one through 13. And I was like, well, I've never heard of this before. What is it? Counterwood? Cru uh, I don't know. It's a book about horses. <laughs> um, so I had not heard of this before, seen it anywhere. But I just saw that the whole set was there. So to me, it was like, I want to pick this up because it's complete. Um, but I didn't want to pay a dollar <laughs> for each one. So I just asked him if he would take five for all of them. There was 13 books. And he said, yeah. And then I think my daughter was with me too. And she had bought a couple books too. So that was probably why he was willing to go down on the price. Um, but yeah, always that's another thing to look for when you're looking at books is like when you see a lot of the same series of books together, it doesn't even have to be complete, but if it's like a lot of the same book, then you can sell it in a lot and those do much better. Cause most of the time when people are, are going out to like look for like books from these series, they want to buy more than one at once. It's just a better deal for them and for everybody. Next is this Harry Potter um, comforter. Um, I can't remember. I think I paid $2 for it at a yard sale. And it sold for $40 plus the cost of shipping. I just um, shipped it in a big um, poly mailer. Now, the thing that's going to suck so bad is now that eBay is changing their, um, their shipping, selling something like this to I have to correct myself. It's not eBay making the changes. It's USPS. Today may be a little bit harder. So, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to pick up comforters anymore or I'll just have to ship them UPS. But the thing for me, looking at like my, for my business, I know everybody's different, you know, does things differently, but I don't go to the post office. I have the um, the mail, my mail lady picks them up from my porch. I highly recommend that if you're doing this, um, if you have packages going out every day, you shouldn't be going to the post office more than once a week if you qualify for a pickup. Um, be, and then if you're like not, if you're not feeling good about leaving your packages on the porch because you're afraid they'll get stolen, um, you can request for them to come knock on your door and you can hand them the packages. Um, it just saves you time because you think about your time driving to the post office, sometimes waiting in line or whatnot and then driving home and gas. And to me during that time driving to the post office and back, I could have listed like 20 items, <laughs> you know, like it's not worth it for me. Um, so if I have to go drive over to UPS FedEx, I'm not quite sure how much that's worth it to me either. So, 
Um, I'm really going to be, um, I don't know. And I don't know if it's different if you use pirate ship, if you save or not. I still have to learn a little bit more about the new shipping, but, um, but yeah, this one only cost me like about 10 bucks, um, at the time. All right. So, um, I had bought these vintage, um, fabric pieces and when I had bought them, they were like cut into like different pieces. So instead of making one listing to sell them together, I made like four different listings because there was four different pieces. Um, but um, somebody like bought three of them. So this one they bought for 22 and I don't really know how to convert into yard. So I always just put the, um, um, the size of the fabric as in like inches. And I let them know that too in the description. I'll be like, I don't know how to convert yards because guarantee someone's going to be emailing me. What's the yard? <laughs> like sorry I don't know like oh my gosh people email me stuff all the time I'm just like oh. um so yeah so that one sold for 22 this one sold for 10 and this one sold for 14 and the price is just it just was depending on the size and then also this the same person bought all three so I was giving her a deal on it and the last item I have to show is a Sesame Street um, H&M shirt. Um, I love selling graphic t-shirts. I always buy because they're, oh, I, I find them everywhere. Like everywhere there's graphic t-shirts. So if I can get them for a dollar or less and sell them for eight, nine, ten dollars, I'll do that all day. You know, I have no problem with that. Um, so yeah, and then I had also sold another Sesame Street shirt that was, I actually had it on here, but then I accidentally deleted it and was too lazy to go back and reopen it. But it was um, from Neff. It was like the Sesame Street for Neff collection. Um, that one I think sold for like a couple dollars more. Uh, but yeah, I, I bought those both at the same yard sale and they were both a dollar a piece, I believe. So yeah, I mean, it's it was, they sold, they both sold, fairly quickly and it was just you know a really quick flip well i hope you found this video helpful in any way at all i try to show you the types of things that you can find when you're out there sourcing um because i really like watching a lot of what sold videos but sometimes it's like if you're gonna show like all like these super rare things it's good to know but it's like the chances of me finding it aren't that Hi, so I like to kind of show you some of the things that I feel like you probably could find out there. Um, so I hope you did find that helpful. Um, please subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Don't forget to like this video and I will see you all in my next video. Never forget, when you thrift upon a star, all your dreams will come true. Wish you tons of luck and hope you get lots of sales this week. Bye.